the MIR-162, which was, uh, had been approved in, in the U.S. and various other countries and was planted in the U.S. in the spring of 2012, uh, had not uh, received a European uh, approval. And so once uh, this year's crop was harvested, even starting in September, that meant we had that one single corn uh, biotech event not approved in Europe, uh, which then uh, pretty much uh, slowed down or even completely stopped uh, shipments of U.S. corn co-products such as DDGS and corn gluten feed, um, and which uh, certain European countries, usually Ireland, Spain, Portugal, uh, Netherlands, have been buying as a uh, feed ingredient. The industry there was uh, working very hard and we offered as much help as we could to help put some pressure on their uh, politicians in Brussels and, and the regulators there uh, to try and speed up the process so that uh, we could get MIR-162 approved. Um, it just received approval here uh, last Friday on October 19th and so that has opened up the trade. So I think it was a very important uh, approval. We were waiting for this for uh, many months now. I was able to do some corn gluten feed this year but uh, with uh, lots of restrictions and lots of uh, contract clause saying if there was something that the product would have to come back. So this will alleviate a little bit those, those, uh, those problems. So I believe we'll be able to do some, some shipments to Europe regarding of uh, corn product, byproducts. Of course, right now we have another situation that it was even talked here yesterday. It's, it, it's uh, regarding the price of the corn products because of these crop problems you had this year here in the United States. For the first time, or at least in the last years, I, I don't remember to have the corn so much higher priced in the United States regard, uh, versus European or other uh, or origins. So that will be an issue, but at least we don't have any legal problems to be able to do the business. So at least that one is solved. Now it's a question of market price.